All right, today I'm going to answer some of the most common questions about Cubase. Uh, let's begin with how to change a track's color. You can see we've got our tracks on the left here. We've got this kind of lighter gray bit here. If we shift and click that, we come up with a whole bunch of color options. If I select orange, it turns all of the uh, clips, all of the blocks on that track, that same color, the same if I do that, for example, with the snare here, make that blue, make the kick a slightly different kind of blue, and you can select any any audio, any MIDI, and you can come up here to the top. There's an icon that kind of looks like a, like a paint palette, I guess. You can click that, and those are uh, some colors that you have available to you. I like to group my sections uh, into different colors, especially if I'm working with someone else in this space, then it's really easy for them to go, Oh, can we go to one bar before the chorus? And I can go, chorus is orange, so we're looking at this bar here, right? It's just a workflow thing that I've found really works for me. But also being able to color things with the tracks on the left here makes it easier to uh, navigate in a in a more uh, vertical sense. So if all of my um, if all of my chord instruments are orange, if all of my drum samples are blue, if all of my bass instruments are purple, that's easy to navigate as well. How to reverse audio. Let's reverse this crash sample. If you press control on your keyboard and then right click the, uh, the audio sample, then go up to the top here, you've got process, and then inside of process you have many exciting options, including reverse. Now it's going to reverse it and keep it in the same place so if I wanted to do like a reverse crash or something I would then have to pull that uh, sample over here but that's how you reverse audio in Cubase. How do you stretch audio in Cubase? Let's say we've got these snare samples uh, we want them to be longer. The way I do it is I press number one on my keyboard uh, twice. You might notice the cursor icon up here will change. The third option there applies time stretch and it's got a little clock next to the cursor to make that obvious and you can see my cursor here has now got a little clock next to it as well. So if I grab the audio I want to stretch out I can then just come to the end of the clip you see there's a little white box here I'm going to click that I'm going to stretch it and the audio becomes stretched. I'm going to press 1 again to go back to the normal cursor mode. Now something to be aware of is that there are different time stretch algorithms. If we double click on the audio we have stretched, we open up this sample editor window and we have the audio warp uh, box here. I actually want to change this from Elastic Pro Time. I want to change that to anything that says tape on it because the cool thing about the tape algorithm is it detunes it. Like you are slowing down a tape player, basically. That's that's what I want in this situation. I find that the depending on what you're trying to do and depending on how much you're stretching an audio file, Elastic Pro Time is a little bit grainy. And sometimes if you're doing lo-fi and stuff, that's a vibe. I like Elastic Pro tape. How do you loop in Cubase? You need the transport panel. You need this panel to be, uh, well, anywhere you want it. If this is not here, you need to go to transport at the top and just select transport panel there. That will make this thing appear. If you're using two screens, sometimes I lose the transport panel over there and I realize when I, when I go to turn it on, I've actually turned it off. Funny stuff. You need this transport panel and you're going to come up here. You can see we've got our bars labeled. Uh, you're just going to move your mouse around until you see that little pen icon and you're just going to click. You're going to drag the region that you want to be looped. That's not going to loop it by itself. If you press this button, activate cycle, this turns purple and it will actually loop now. Where does Cubase save audio files? A good question. Normally, Cubase will save audio files in the project folder. Uh, so if you open up wherever your project is saved, it's the place that has got the, the project, the Cubase project, the .cpr uh, file. You should have an audio folder in there as well. And if you open that up, you can see, yes, I've got kick, snare, hi-hat, and crash kick, snare, hi-hat, and crash. Those are all of my audio files in there. If you open Cubase and it says there are audio files missing, it's usually because Cubase knows to look in this folder and the audio files 
aren't there, or maybe their name has changed. So that's usually what goes on when Cubase loses audio files. It needs to be in whatever directory uh, the project is saved. I mean, it doesn't need to be, but if you're trying to be tidy and you're trying to, you know, work in such a way that things work, it's a smart idea. How do you quantize audio in Cubase? Great question. If I select the, uh, the sample I want to quantize, I should just be able to press Q. Perfect. Now, what happens if it's kind of over here? Is it going to snap to that closest beat? No, it's going to snap over here for some reason. And it snaps over here because I have selected up here 16th triplet notes, which is absolutely not what I want. If I select uh, eighth notes, now what happens when I press Q? It goes to where I want it to be. Wonderful. I almost always keep the grid snap on. And that means that wherever I move stuff, you see how it's not moving smoothly back and forth? It's kind of clipping. That is because it is snapping to beats. How to export MP3s from Cubase. The first thing you need to do is select your region. Uh, your region is this area that you can draw in. If you move your mouse to the top, you can see there's a little pencil that appears and you can draw like so. That is your loop region. So when you go to render something, when you go to export a file, it's going to be that bit that it exports. I usually say you wanna export just a teeny tiny bit before your audio starts, and you wanna make sure that there's enough time for any, let's say you've got a synthesizer with a long release, you wanna make sure that you're getting all of that sound. So, so I tend to go you know, nearly a full bar at the end of the song just to capture everything. That's if I'm exporting a song. If I'm exporting a sample, for example, ha, that was fun to say. I will do it pretty rigidly uh, just for the beat or however long the sample is. I've set my region like so. If we go up to the top left and go File, Export, Audio Mix Down, you then get all sorts of options. Uh, I want an MP3 because that was the question. So I'm just going to come to File Type and select MPEG 1 Layer 3. Uh, that's what MP3 is short for. Uh, I want to make sure it's not a mono down mix. I want an interleaved mix. That means you will have a stereo audio file. They could have just labeled it stereo, but they didn't. And the bit rate, 192 kilobytes. Yeah, that, that's about right. Yeah, and then I hit export. And is it going to export the audio to... Here it comes. To the mix down folder, which is here. There you go. MP3. How to speed up Cubase export times. I have found that if I'm working on a long piece of audio, like a podcast or a video or something, if it's 40 minutes to an hour and I'm exporting an MP3 and there's quite a lot of plugins going on, quite a lot of tracks, the render time can be like half an hour and that's a pain in the bum. You can speed it up but it's a, little, uh, it's a little tricky. If we go to Studio at the top there and then Studio Setup, the first option here should be your audio system. I'm using a Focusrite a USB ASIO. Um, we can open the control panel here and w depending on what interface you're using, it's gonna look a little bit different. The thing that we're worried about is the buffer size. Generally, don't mess with the buffer size. However, if you're exporting something that's going to be a really long audio file and, and it's time sensitive, it may be worth doing. If I come up here and I select one of these higher numbers, uh, 512 or 1024, any of those, the render time is going to be massively, massively reduced. I'm talking 40 minutes down to three or four minutes. It's really significant. What you will have to do usually is when you select this, Cubase will stop working because you've reset the audio device, right? So you'll have to close Cubase. Sometimes you'll have to restart the computer and open it with the new selected buffer. Even then, for the sake of a three minute ex export, even if you've had to restart the computer or restart Cubase, it still works out quicker. If you're in a time sensitive situation, it is worth doing. If you are not in a time sensitive situation, I would just, just leave the buffer, go get a cup of tea, use the bathroom, touch some grass, you know, whatever. The reason we don't always keep the buffer up here with one of these higher numbers 
is because when you play back audio in Cubase, it can be glitchy, it can be buggy, it can be laggy, and it can generally be really, really annoying. So in general, I keep my buffer quite low. 48 is about right. And if I have to do a time-sensitive export, it is worth jumping up to one of the much higher numbers. That is how you speed up export times in Cubase. Well, it's one of the ways you can do it anyway. There are other ways. But this is the one that I do. If this has solved your problem, I would love to know about it in the comments. If this hasn't solved your problem, I would love to know about it in the comments. And if you want to subscribe to this channel, you can see all kinds of music content, music production, guitar-related stuff, uh, music humor sometimes, uh, lots of Cubase. All right, thank you so much.